Hi, Madeline here with a new episode of With a Little Help from Max for Life. And this time we're going to have a look at another free life pack from Ableton for Life 11. And that is Pitch Loop 89. Developed by Robert Henke and the Max for Life audio effect is a pitch shifter with two independent delay lines. And it's inspired by the Publison DHM89, which is an all digital effect processor. A cool piece of old hardware that you can create really interesting sounds with. And I've already created a live set here with three tracks that contain different sounds, but all the pitch loop 89 as well. And we're going to start with the first one, which has backing vocals of a song of mine. So let's have a quick listen. We know the land of As you can hear, we can create really interesting sounds with it. So let's have a look at it. So here we can see it has two independent delay lines. And we can either adjust them independently or we can link them together here. And then we can adjust the parameters on the left side. And it's changed for both sides. I can show you this with position. We so the idea is that we can change things on the left side for both together and then we can change things on the right individually, which is very useful. So the position determines where the pitched version is played back in relation to the input signal and it basically corresponds to the delay time together with the segment size, at least not in whole time. Random create uh, random jumps in the position. Then next up we've got segment. This sets the duration of each pitch shift in delay segment. And as you can hear, it affects the sound quite dramatically. Shorter settings are great for rhythmic sounds we know for and longer ones for more textural sounds. Here we have the bandwidth setting, so we can set the recording and playback sampling rate. And this has an influence on the maximum delay length, the short-term values of the playback control, and the upper frequency limit. So that means at 20k, we've got two seconds of delay time without transposition per channel. And that doubles each time we go lower in the sampling rate. Early hardware effects tended to have very low RAM. So this is what is modeled after because it just creates really interesting sounds as well. We know the love so when we go lower with the sampling rate, it creates interesting octave jumps of the audio buffer. And this automatically extends the delay length at the same time. Just with this alone, you can create very interesting effects. So then here we've got hold, and this lets us freeze the internal delay line. I'm going to set dry wet to 100%. And the cross-faded loop is defined by position and segment. So I can tweak these parameters and I can still create different changing sounds while everything's frozen. And here the position is shown in milliseconds once, segment as well, and then also visually. And currently it's shown in blue, which means that it's frozen. And of course, 
the pitch shifter needs to be able to change the pitch. From minus 24 semitones to plus 24. You can also do this separately for the right. And then we also have fine tuning as usual. And then here we've got back that we can turn on for backwards. So what it does is just reverse the audio. So now it'd be played back forwards again. And then we also have short. This scales the position and segment parameters internally and creates short delays for classic pitch shifting sounds. And then here we've got two modes. The first one is Xing. So short for crossing. So this allows for the splicing of segments at matching zero crossings, which creates fewer artifacts. And fade uh, creates longer internal crossfades. This can also have quite a big impact on the sound. And here we've got position modulation with an LFO that we can turn on or off. And here we've got the different waveforms that we can choose from. So we've got really typical waveforms. Random is a step random function. And with move we've got a randomly changing continuous oscillation. And with ramp we can do pretty interesting things. I'm going to select this first and show you. So if we choose a high depth value uh, for the LFO and then a very slow rate and then make sure hold is on, we can basically create time stretching. Depth setting defines how much the LFO shifts the position. And at 100% we've got the largest modulation range. And for the pitch we also have a modulation which is another LFO but the vibrato. And for this, we've got two choices of waveforms for the vibrato. So I'm going to pause playback. So for the vibrato, we've got a sine wave or a unipolar square wave, but upward only. And then we have the rate in hertz again, and then the depth, so the strength of the vibrato in semitones or in between. Let's turn it back on and try it out. Clearly audible. Not my favorite thing here on the vocals, but depending on the sound, it can be really cool. And here we've got a filtering section with a high cut and a low cut that we can set in hertz or kilohertz. And then here we've got the feedback section where we can set the amount of sound supposed to be fed back. How much is fed back from the output into the input and then in which way. And first up, we've got left-right, which means that the, from the left output, it'll be fed back into the left input and from right to right. With some, 
the outputs of the left and right channel are summed together and then fed back into the inputs. And with cross, the left output would be fed into the right again and vice versa. Here we can set how much stereo we want or complete mono. The output gain for each channel and the dry wet setting. Right, so much for the parameters. Now we can check out how that sounds on a different kind of sound. So here I've got a fairly simple preset. And here we've got a drum kit. And this is a bit more like slapback delay. And not as wet. and we can play them together. That's it, I hope you found this useful. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe and I'll hopefully see you next time. Bye.